we go to select SG4. Here's the pants and the trim. Select SG5. Here's the feet. Here's the jacket. And lastly, select SG7 are the two hands. The one thing that I have left here in my 0 to 1 space is the monocle. And I didn't actually project that because it, it was a square in the first place, so I, there's really no need to project it. All I want to do is scale this down. And inside of our Edit UPW window, we have a few different tools. We have our Move tool, we have our Rotate, we have our Scale tool, but then we also have a Scale Horizontal and a Scale Vertical. Then lastly, we have another tool called Freeform Mode. Freeform Mode works basically with the Move, Rotate, and Scale tool all in one. Depending on where you are inside this grid is depending on how the tool works. So as long as I'm inside this box here, you'll see the Move tool, so I can move it around like so. If I go to the dead center, you'll see the cursor change, and this adjusts the pivot point. And we don't want to typically adjust the pivot point, but, I mean, we have the ability to adjust the pivot point. Then, if we go to the four corners, one, two, three, four, is this gives us our scale tool, so that we can scale it in a non-uniform manner. If we want to scale it uniformly, we need to hold down Control. If we want to scale based on our pivot point, we want to hold down Control and Alt. The other thing is, is that on the sides, the edges, you have four points. This allows us to do our rotations. So this tool, the freeform mode, actually allows us to do, like I said, our move, rotate, and scale all within one tool. So rather than switching between the different types. There are times when you are going to need to use specific tools like the scale horizontal or the scale vertical, or the move horizontal or move vertical. But for doing something like this where we're just scaling down the object, is that we can just use our freeform mode. So I'm going to just continue and now break these parts down a little more so that they're easier to texture. Because we need to take all these pieces here that we have and throw them into this square. This square represents the 0 to 1 space, all right? 0, 0 here being 1, 1 here. This grid space is where the texture needs to go. So when you hear, let's create a, a square texture or texture that's a power of two, is that this is where the texture goes or loads. And we'll see that in uh, later examples, but for right now is that this texture space is blank. So ideally what we want to do is be able to take our different sections and bring them down or cut them up so that they fit into the zero to one space and that we get equal equally sized checkers. We also want to try not to have any any of the areas overlapping. So like right now we have the feet and the hand, feet and the hands overlapping. That's not something that we typically want to do. Uh, we also have issues with the top hat. Again, that's something that we typically would want to try to avoid. Um, even here with the face. So we need to just break this down so that we get better results. <clears throat> so I'm going to start out here with the jacket and with the jacket we want to break this down so that we get a nice cut and nice distribution. So we look at ideally where the viewer is least likely to see a scene. So right here where we have it touching the outside edges, yeah, they're probably not going to see that. But we also, when we look at our character, is that they might not see seams here and running along the back of the penguin here. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge here, and then I'm going to click on Edge Loop. And what that does is just gets the continuous edges all the way up to the arm. Then I'm going to select that edge and that edge and do an Edge Loop again. And this should bring me all the way up to the wrist. From there, I'm just going to go to Tools and click on Break. 
And what this will do is create a seam edge. All right. And the reason that we want to have this seam edge is that we want to break this down and have it smooth out. And when we have like basically cuts in there, we can have it smooth out a little easier. So I'm going to select all the faces from with my polygon sub object mode like so for the jacket. And I'm going to go to tools and relax. The relax tool is an easy way to unwrap or help you unwrap. So you need to know what you're doing before you use the relax tool, but this is an efficiency tool. This saves you a lot of time as far as trying to move vertices around. So I'm going to relax by face angles. All right, make sure that you do set it to face angles. And I'm going to hit apply. And when I hit apply, it sort of flips out. And I'm going to try it again and again and again. And since I'm using 2009, I'm going to hit start relax. Give it a couple seconds and hit stop relax. And you can see that we do have some overlapping here, but when we look at our jacket, is that you should see that the checkers themselves are pretty clean meaning that they are distributed pretty evenly. Like I said, there are some some issues here where there is some overlapping, but overall it's not too bad. I mean, this is far easier to tackle than what originally was. And just so that we can go back and you can see some of the other types is that when we use the relax tool, we need to be in our face of object mode. If I was to do relax by um, the box by edge angles and hit start we sort of get this animated twist and that really doesn't help us at all so that's why you need to make sure that you're relaxed by face angles the other option is relaxed by centers and this is useless um, yeah is what relaxed by centers will try to do is bring it back to the original shape and that really doesn't do us any good. So again, relax by face angles. I'll just hit start relax. And I gotta go back actually before this because it tweaked. Alright, so now that's good. Now what I want to do is just go into my vertex sub object mode and right where I have this overlapping going on. I'm going to just pull those down so they're, that this is no longer overlapping. And I'll do that on the inside also. So now I have, I mean, my coat, the outside of the coat took a matter of seconds, and I'm done. If some doesn't look right, like on the inside right here where I have some stretching going on, is the other thing I can do is relax, but this time check on base angles, keep boundary points fixed. And just hit apply a few times and that will try to soften up some of the stuff. Uh, the reason that you would want to have keep boundary points fixed is just so that the outside seam edges all stay in location and it's only the vertices that are on the inside that are going to be jarred around a little bit to try to soften the appearance of the texture. Alright, so this is good. Uh, I'm going to take these pieces and just move them to the right. I'll take my completed pieces and have them hanging out, hanging out on the left. So the relax tool is a very, 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 very helpful tool. So I'm going to try this in a number of different places to just, I mean, give you the idea of what's going on. Uh, the next area that I'm going to try to tackle here is going to be the face and this is going to be a somewhat of a nightmare because of the nose but I'll try to relax by face angles I'll just hit apply yeah that's this is going to be difficult to work with but um, what I need to do is that I 
I need to actually do some stitching here. And how we stitch is we go to our edge sub-object mode, and what you'll notice is when you select an edge, the edge that should connect with it will turn blue, like so. So then I can just go to Tools, and then click on Stitch Selected. Normally, if your edge is right next to each other, you can just keep a line and scale clusters checked like so and hit OK. But sometimes you're going to need to uncheck those. So I'm just moving that to make sure that I have the right edge selected, stitch selected, hit OK. And right here, this is a, a mess, so I'm just trying to untangle this. And one thing that you'll notice is that when we actually have an edge, or a vertice even selected, is just like in edge, is that the connecting edge will, or connecting vertice will turn blue. So we have these faces here which are actually need to be broken apart, so I'm going to go to Tools, Break, so I can pull those faces off, and they actually go down here. So I'm going to go to my vertex, sub-object mode. And I'm just moving the vertices into place like so. And it looks like I possibly do have an extra vert that needs to be welded. So before I do that, I'll just go back to my edge and right click and do a stitch selected right click stitch selected right click stitch selected <coughs> and like I mentioned is that there is a vert somewhere here that needs to be actually welded. Alright, so those are the, the faces. And how I'm going to actually do this is I'm going to actually collapse the unwrap down and then go into my vertex of object mode. And I can see the vert right there and just click remove. Then just go back, make sure that I'm out of my sub-object mode, so I'm back on editable poly, and then go back to unwrap. Open up my edit UVW window, and there we go. I just got rid of that stray floating bird. Um, looks like I do have a couple more I do have a couple more back here, so again, I'm just going to collapse this down, jump to my vertex of optic mode, select these verts, click remove. I thought I actually got rid of these, but clearly I did not. So now I'll just go back, sub object mode, or out of sub object mode, unwrap UVW. Alright, so that's better. And I'm not going to mess with the nose right now. I'll stitch that up. And I'm going to relax the rest of the face. So I'm going to have these verts selected. I'm going to deselect the face. And then go to Tools, Relax. Relax by face angles and hit Apply. And I'm just going to hit Apply three or four times. So close that. 